Ladies over 40, listen up. Are you tired or sluggish? Have you seemingly gained weight overnight out of nowhere? Do you get cold easily? Is your skin dry? Is it menopause? Or is it your thyroid? Or maybe it's both. On today's episode, I want to shed some light on what could be going on with you. These are the things that I wish I would have known sooner that would have prevented my 15 pound weight gain last year. It is going to be a good one, guys. So grab your coffee and let's get into it. Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of Candidly with Coffee, and I am very sad to share that we have an empty seat. (laughs) We have an empty seat here today, and I can't believe it, but Mike is not going to make it for today's episode. I literally was waiting here for him and got a call, and he's just not feeling well. We don't know exactly what it is. My daughter did just have a virus, like the norovirus, which is like a a stomach virus of some sort. And she, it took her out like for several days last week. And so he had an episode yesterday where he was vomiting as well. So we just thought it was what she had. And was it yesterday or the day before? There was the day before yesterday, Thursday. Uh, But he started to feel better yesterday. And so we thought we were going to be able to record today. He was feeling better this morning and now he's not feeling so well again. You know what? I just told him, sit this one out. This one is very lady specific anyhow. So I thought I got this. I want to talk to my ladies because we're going to have a discussion about what could be going on with the weight gain that comes out of nowhere when it comes to menopause. So stay tuned. We're going to get into that. And I'm going to do my best, guys. I'm going to do my best without Mr. Escobar, but we are all going to miss him dearly. And he will be back on the pod soon. But yeah, he definitely had a scary little incident. And now I'm thinking like I want to explore a little further because I don't know, I just get nervous, right? He has struggled with high blood pressure, but he's it's been normal. And and even um, when he had his episode, immediately I checked his blood pressure and it was normal. I thought, okay, it's not related to your blood pressure, but now I'm just concerned. So I want to go home and check his blood pressure. So we are going to get on top of that. But it just goes to show you guys, it is a reminder for health is wealth. Okay. Health is wealth. We need to take care of our health. We need to put our health first because in the midst of something just not feeling right, you just realize that you cannot take, you cannot take your health for granted. I'm sure you guys are all wishing him well. And hopefully I will give you guys an update on Instagram, see how everything is going. But fingers crossed, it's just a lingering bout of this norovirus. It did take Alyssa a few days to get over it as well. We will, hopefully he gets on the men soon because I can't be doing this alone. This is not my, this is not my forte. I need my co-pilot. It just doesn't feel the same, but that's okay. This is a very woman centric topic that we're going to talk about. But for now, I wanted to just remind you guys that to follow us on candidly underscore with coffee on Instagram, because I will be updating on how he's doing on stories over there. So make sure you're following us there. And just a little reminder that this Friday is our live episode on YouTube. So make sure you check that out 5 p.m pacific time we're live over on youtube just a very casual fun conversation where we answer your questions rapid fire style so get your questions ready and we look forward to having that little evening with you and yeah so if you have not already left us a five-star review you guys leave us a five-star review on apple podcast i received a few recently and i wanted to share them this first one comes to us from Maria with Hood Fitness in California. She says, I eagerly anticipate each episode of this podcast. The engaging content and insightful discussions keep me hooked. Janine, you're so easy to listen to and constantly bring up the great diverse topics. Mike just keeps my husband and I laughing. Keep up the fantastic work. Thank you so much, Maria. I appreciate it. Shout out to Hood Fitness. I don't know if you have a little fitness studio or something in California, but thank you so much for leaving us the comment. I really do appreciate the support. You guys have no idea. The next one comes to us from Diana Avila 24. 
I love your guys' show. I listen mostly on YouTube, but listen once in a while on the podcast. I listen religiously to your shows and always look forward to the next one. Me and my husband are in our mid-40s and work out. We love our food, so that's always the challenging part, not the gym part. We got that routine down, LOL. I am also going through pre-menopause and am learning a ton from you. Thank you so much for being real. I appreciate you both taking the time to share your experience and knowledge. Love you guys and look forward to merch. Yes, we are going. I actually ordered a few pieces of merch, like test pieces to see. And I was wondering why they hadn't come in yet. And I checked the tracking and they were delivered last Saturday, but they're nowhere to be found. So unfortunately, our first little test pieces are lost somewhere. Somebody out there has candidly with coffee merch. Can you believe that? Anyways, so hopefully we will be getting on top of that. I got to get back on that. I just discovered that this morning. I was not happy. All right, moving on. Another five-star review. Thank you so much, Fancy Nancy 73 I discovered your podcast on YouTube and have enjoyed your authenticity since the first one I listened to. I am currently training for 100K race and listen while I'm running, walking to the trails treadmill. Each episode makes me want to listen to another to help me keep up my miles because of the topics you talk about and the things you talk about that make me laugh. Keep up the great content and thanks for keeping it real. Busted can of biscuits. Oh, Mike's busted can of beans lives on. All right, you guys, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate taking the time to put to leave those reviews, head over to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review. We would really appreciate it. I will link that down in the show description here on YouTube. So if you click on that link, it'll take you there. You could leave the review. It'll also be in the show notes if you are listening on any other app. So I really appreciate that. All right, next up, I wanted to just share MegaFit just released two new meals, and I haven't tried them yet, but I'm excited. One is called like the Spartan, and the other is grilled stuffed peppers, and don't those look just so delicious? I just, I love MegaFit. They have been coming in clutch for me lately, you guys. Love them, and I'm so happy to be working with them, and thanks to you guys, I am having a successful partnership with them, and I appreciate each and every one of you that trusts my recommendations and uses my link. I do have a discount code for them as well. If you have not ever tried them, then you can reach out to me in like Instagram DM or send me an email or comment on this video and I will give you my discount code. I'm not allowed to put it out publicly because there's some unscrupulous things that happen when people do that. But I do have a code if you haven't tried them before, you can get a discount off your first purchase. So I, again, I appreciate the support because it has been amazing. All right. And the hot coffee topic is, so this is actually a local crime that's happened here in um, Santa Clara, California. These are engineers that work at Google. They're husband and wife engineers in their mid twenties. And the husband was arrested on suspicion of murdering his wife. Can you believe that? They're 25 years old. They live in a $2 million home in Santa Clara. And apparently the night before a friend or a coworker was at their home at dinner and said that the behavior of the husband was off and was alarming. So much so that the next day he tried comment or contacting both the husband and the wife. And when he, they did not respond, he went to the home. And when he went to the home, he knocked on the door and nobody answered, but he peeked inside of a window and he could see the husband on his hands and knees with his hands reached up to the sky. And then he saw blood splattered. So he immediately called the police and the wife was found in a room nearby where the husband was kneeling bludgeoned to death. She had, and the husband had a swollen hand and blood on him. So he has obviously been arrested. No further details though, but they're young, a young couple, successful work together, beautiful home in Santa Clara. So sad. So this one definitely piqued my interest because it's a local case, but crazy, right? I'm definitely going to follow this one and see if I can get any additional details. And so I'll have to give you guys an update as more information comes out. All right, moving on. That is the Hold My Coffee. 
And gosh, it does, cold mic coffee doesn't feel right when Mike isn't here because he's like my little cheerleader when it comes to hold my coffee. But this hold my coffee, it doesn't go out to anyone in, in particular. But what I want to reiterate, just because of some comments that I've received, you guys, the reason why our show is successful and becoming more successful is Mike and I are unapologetically ourselves. And we share on this show our opinions on things. Now, do I claim that our opinions are the only way and we're always right? Absolutely not. As always, this show has evolved with how our lives have evolved. And, and I'll give you an example. Years ago, we every Friday night would go out for spicy margaritas and we would talk about our spicy margaritas and love and enjoy and and celebrate those margaritas. And now we don't talk about that because why? Because we've evolved and we've both decided that alcohol is not going to be a regular part of our lives. And so we no longer do that. So now we don't talk about margaritas. So the show has evolved. And I don't think there was a problem with when we drank margaritas. And I don't think there's a problem now. It's just that we're going to talk about things and get candid on the show about things that are currently relevant in our lives. And that's how the show will continue to evolve. It'll evolve with us because that's what this is. This is a show where we share our opinions and banter and talk about relationships and health and fitness and things like that. What it isn't, it's not a very rigid science-based show or it's also not a political show and will never be a political show. It is not a religious show and will never be a religious show. I feel like those more hard-hitting news topics and very serious topics, you can find plenty of news outlets to get your information there. This show is meant to be for entertainment purposes that you can get some value within our scope of practice. Our scope of practice is we are certified in nutrition and fitness. Mike has over 20 years of experience in the fitness world. I have eight years of experience in the weight loss world. I am currently in the process of getting certified in my menopause certification. So that's why a lot of the content is around menopause. And I guess my hold my coffee is that is what our show is about. And in our bio, we are like spiel about our show is we're a we are candidly with coffee. We deliver fitness and nutrition information in a no BS fun and relatable way. I think our show is in line with that. So that's the kind of show because I've gotten questions recently about what kind of show is this and why don't you get into you talk about getting breast implants, but why aren't you talking about breast implant illness? Or you talk about eating a balanced diet, but why aren't you talking about the toxins and foods? And because uh, we just talk about what's relevant to our lives and what we talk about and what's interesting to us. And that's the beauty of having your own show. So if you want hard hitting, science backed, very rigid type of show, it's not candidly with coffee. It's going to be something on somewhere else, <laughs> Science USA or something like that. So that's like my spiel. I'm venting because sometimes I, get, I do get annoyed with certain comments and things. I don't delete them. So they're there if you guys want to go back and read them. I don't delete any comments. I feel like everyone has the right to express their opinions. But then again, I have a show. So then I have a right to vent my opinions on the show. And that's what we do. And if Mike was here, he would absolutely be doing that. What I do say is as we've grown and we get more a bigger following and we are reaching more people, you get along with the people that love you, you get more people that don't like you very much. And it's a little bit of a, a shift for sure, because when you're growing and when you're small, you get like your group, your people, and they just love you and they just lift you up. And it gets so exciting to continue to do show after show. Where it gets challenging is when you start getting the, the negativity. But I also know that the negativity is a sign that we are doing the right thing and that we're reaching more people. At the end of the day, in order for us to grow, we have to reach more people. And when you reach more people, you are going to be in a situation where you're going to have more people that do not like you. 
or do not like what you have to say or don't agree with you, which like I've said many times, if you find some entertainment factors in some of the things we say and you disagree with some things, you you probably could still be a fan of the show for sure, because we don't have to agree on everything. That's for sure. I love good conversation, but I don't like is when people inflict their what they think our show should be and what we should be having on our show because that's where I have a problem. It's don't tell me what you want me to talk about instead of or what hard-hitting topics because that's just that we just we didn't, we're just not going to do that. You know what I mean? We're going to be true to who we are and like I said if if I'm not currently if I don't have an issue with some particular toxin or something then I'm not going to care enough to talk about it. Does that make sense? You guys, so I'm going to stop venting on that tip and now we are going to go into my favorite comment corner. All right, comment corner. The first one comes to us from Cobalt Petals, 5476. I like the change in lighting. You both look great. Thank you so much. We definitely have changed the lighting, and I love it. I'm using the same lighting I did in the last episode, and I'm really happy with it. I think this is it for us. This is definitely it. Okay, the next one comes to us from KO Wildlife Photography. I listen to my body. I'm feeding it whole or minimally processed foods most times, trying to clean it up as much as I can. Still, it tells me there are problems, but the doctors are not interested. Can't even get an appointment with the GP. Therefore, I am researching how to make myself better. Thank you for this podcast. Just found you and subscribed. Thank you so much for this. And yes, I understand that completely. And in fact, one of the things I'm going to talk about in this episode is how my GP completely ignored my symptoms and had I not sought out additional care from Transcend HRT, I would have never have discovered that I had hypothyroidism or it would have taken a lot longer to make the discovery and who knows how much weight, more weight I would have gained or how much more it would have impacted my life. So I'm going to go into that a little bit later, but thank you so much for this comment. And we do have to be our own advocates. And unfortunately, our general practitioners, a lot of times, just keep us alive. They're there for if we have acute situations that occur, but if we have, if we're not, they're not really, in my experience, I'm not going to say all doctors because there are some good doctors out there. In fact, I know we have some subscribers that are physicians, so I'm not slamming, generalizing all doctors, but in my experience lately, I have had a difficult time finding one that cared beyond my acute care or like my routine testing. I recommend definitely seeking additional help like a like functional medicine or in my case Transcend HRT where they did more in-depth blood analysis and they had more things to offer besides general medication like peptides and things like that not just hormones but just peptides in general if you've looked into that but hopefully you can find some relief in whatever experiences you are experiencing continue to listen to your body and seek outside help from someone else other than your GP because that's clearly not working for you. Okay, the next one comes to us from Virginia Panilla 1379. I just recently found you guys on YouTube and I'm hooked. I love your content. Thank you so much. I love new subscribers, new listeners. So thank you very much for that. The next one, 5507, you would be the first people I'd actually subscribe to on Patreon. I love listening to you too, and I can't get enough of it. Thank you so much. So much feedback on the Patreon, you guys. We are very excited. I think we're going to go forward and do a Patreon. More details to come on that. It will not take away anything from our current show. We will still be doing two shows a week of our candid opinions, <laughs> and we will also still be doing our bi weekly lives on YouTube. The Patreon shows will be at a minimum of one additional uncensored, unfiltered show only on Patreon. It'll be a little more juicy and gossipy at times, probably a little more venti at times. And then it will also be a place where we can get a little more um, R-rated, I should say. R-rated because we want to get into some topics about relationships and intimacy and the bedroom and stuff like that. And I just want a safe space that my my 
kids are not going to stumble upon. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for all of your feedback there because we really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to venturing out into the world of Patreon. So I appreciate all of your support and feedback on that. All right, we're moving on. We are going to discuss the thyroid. You guys see what that is on the screen? I'm going to put it up on the screen for you guys to see. The thyroid is the butterfly looking gland that resides in our throat. And what is hypothyroidism? Do you guys, are you familiar with hypothyroidism? Because I'm going to discuss it with you. You might have it and not even know. You might think you're a menopausal woman and might have issues with your thyroid and you don't even know. So hypothyroidism is a medical condition that occurs when your thyroid gland, a small butterfly shaped gland located in your neck, doesn't produce enough thyroid hormones. These hormones play a critical role in regulating various bodily functions, including your metabolism. Yes, your metabolism, the metabolism, that function in our body that directly affects whether we gain or lose weight, that metabolism, you guys, this is critical. It's, let's just, let's think about this, okay? It is like a car without fuel. That's when you have hypothyroidism. So imagine your thyroid gland is the engine of a car. A thy and thyroid hormones are, are the fuel. So in hypothyroidism, the engine isn't producing enough fuel. So the car doesn't run as efficiently as it should. So our body is the car. The thyroid is the engine. The thyroid hormones are the fuel. Our body is not going to run optimally if we cannot have, if we don't have gas in the engine won't run. Therefore, the car put turns off. So that's what happens when you have hypothyroidism. So the symptoms of hypothyroidism can vary, but often include fatigue, weight gain, weight gain when you've changed nothing with the way that you eat, suddenly you're gaining weight, feeling cold, dry skin, brittle hair, difficulty concentrating, it's essential that if you have hypothyroidism, that you get that diagnosed and treated for you to have an optimized life and to feel good and to have good quality of life. It is essential. You do not want to be trying to live your life with hypothyroidism. There's absolutely no reason to do so. Here's the problem. And I'm going to go over even some additional signs and symptoms, but here's the problem. Did you see, did you notice that all of those things that I discussed were things that we often feel as women in perimenopause and menopause. And those symptoms are often brushed aside as, oh, you're in menopause or, oh, you're in peri. It's normal. That's what we're told, right? We're led to believe that, okay, it's normal that you're feeling these things um, and it's just part of life. It's part of the change. And we're just expected to just live that way and somehow function and be good moms and good wives to our husbands and run our household, even though we are struggling with all of the things that are that I just discussed, fatigue, obesity, because suddenly you're gaining weight, feeling cold, joint and muscle pain, hair loss, depression, low mood, constipation, some other ones that are not as commonly known, but low heart rate. So if your heart rate is irregularly low, that could also be a sign of hypothyroidism. Problem is, like I said, a lot of times we think it's menopause. And if you are just one of those people that you have it in your head, it's menopause. I'm just going to deal with it. Or it's perimenopause. I'm just going to deal with it. And maybe you're not even open to HRT for fear or what, whatever your personal reasons are. So that's not an option. So you just think I'm going to deal with it. And now you have a condition that you're not addressing that you could actually do something about if you knew you had it. Here's the, the situation. So say you do get your blood work done and your, they, your general doctor usually will, they will not do a deep thyroid panel on you, especially if like they just are putting you in the menopause box. They'll just do regular routine blood work. And if you're, they'll test for TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone. It's not even your actual thyroid hormones that they're testing. They test the TSH, and if the TSH is within their normal range, then they look no further. And that's what happened to me. Let me go into 
what happened with me specifically. So I always was, my TSH was in the normal range for, I look back in my history and my blood work since the early 2000s, it's always been about 1.5 to 1.9 to 2.0 around that range, which is considered normal. So just to let you know, a normal range, anywhere from like 1.0 to 4.0 is considered normal or 1.5 to 4.0 is considered normal. I've, but optimal, where your body is, your engine is functioning optimally, you'd like to see it closer to 2.0, like 1.8, 1.5 1 to 2.0. That's optimal. And I had always been in that range. But then in May of last year, I got my routine blood work in and I tested at, at that checkup in May, I was at 4.7. So it was out of what I had looked up as the normal range, but according to my doctor, up to five in her guide was normal. When she emailed me back saying, everything's normal on my blood work, I questioned the thyroid and she's all, nope, it's, it's normal. It's within normal range. And I didn't think anything of it. I really didn't because I attributed that my symptoms were menopause related. Even then I was still choose it's menopause and didn't want to do anything about that for me but that's another topic but I assumed it was menopause related but here I had put on weight I was struggling with low mood I was struggling with constipation poor sleep all of those things and again was it menopausal or was it hypo was it my thyroid it's probably a combination of both but there is a link between menopause and hypothyroidism but the percentage is somewhere around 20 to 25 percent of women depending on where you look i've seen all the way up to 35 percent of menopausal women do get become hypothyroid in menopause when they've never had an issue before. So there is a link with a drop in estrogen and the function of the thyroid. So for me, I had always had a normal thyroid and it menopause seemed to have triggered a hypothyroidism. At this time, I still, again, didn't realize that because I was, they only tested my TSH levels, not my T3 and T4, which would need a full metabolic panel of blood work, which your general practitioner doesn't normally do. And you can actually have somewhat normal TSH levels and still be low T3 and low T4. So that is also something to keep in mind. But at the levels I was at, my doctor didn't want to do anything about that. So when I actually decided I was going to go forward with HRT, I then went through Transcend HRT and they did a full blood panel, including a full thyroid panel, my T3, my T4, my TSH. This is now only three months after my previous blood work. And in that three months, my thyroid, it was elevated again. My TSH now was 4.9 and my T3 and T4 were quite low. I don't actually have the exact numbers of what they were, but they were quite low. It was clear that I was in the hypothyroid range, which meant that a lot of the symptoms that I was experiencing could also have been from hypothyroid, including the weight gain, even though I was actively trying to lose weight and actively tracking my macros, it could have been attributed to the hypothyroid. So luckily with Transcend, they've identified that issue and recommended that I go on medication. So I'm taking Armour Thyroid for that. And I actually just retested my blood and I will see where things are at now. Hopefully things have improved, but I will be doing an update on my YouTube channel on that, on my HRT journey. But I wanted to just go over this with you guys because I think that I was talking to someone earlier today and she had been describing some of her symptoms and I thought, you should have your thyroid checked. She goes, well, it's always been normal. I was like, yeah, mine was always normal as well until it wasn't. So unless you've had it tested in the last few months, you should have it tested and you should have a full panel tested. Some of the ex symptoms she was experiencing were she has problems with digestion and constipation, um, regulating temperature, slow heart rate, weight gain. And she is actually on HRT. So it's likely not menopausal related because she is taking hormones, but it could be her thyroid. Now, the jury's still out. We don't know in her case, but it just made me think that we don't know. And had I not sought additional help and questioned things, 
I would probably still be in a situation right now where I was on HRT. Maybe if I had gone to someone for HRT and they didn't check my thyroid, I'm on HRT, but I'm still struggling with symptoms thinking, oh, HRT is not working. Or maybe I'm someone who wasn't going to do HRT because of my own personal beliefs on that. And so I would have just thought, okay, these symptoms, my doctor says everything else is normal. I'm in menopause. So these symptoms are just menopause. It just goes to show we have to be the detectives of our own bodies and we have to question things and also again just because you're in normal range on things what's normal normal for what normal for a menopausal woman normal for an overweight woman normal for what i don't want to be normal i want to be optimized and if you want if you're you want your time on this earth you want to look and feel your best while you're on this earth, you need to be optimized. Normal is not acceptable. And I think that we need to start setting higher standards for what is acceptable. And we need to think that just because we're told, oh, that's normal. So like it's normal to be a menopausal woman and gain weight and have a low mood and have hot flashes and not sleep well. I should be okay with being normal? No, we have to start expecting more from our healthcare and our doctors, and we need to ask the questions. It really is important. Let's some some of the other things I wanted to go over. Let me specifically go over the TS, TSH test. And just because, also, I wanted to say, just because you might not be, like I said, normal doesn't necessarily mean optimized. So perhaps you have a thyroid that is technically in the normal range but it is not optimized. Maybe you have subclinical hypothyroidism, meaning you're experiencing some of the symptoms of hypothyroidism, the weight gain, sluggish metabolism, all the other things, but it's not necessarily on paper hypothyroidism, but you may still benefit from some assistance when it comes to increasing the T3 and T4 and being able to synthesize those hormones to optimize the thyroid engine, right? And if you can do that and it could rev up your metabolism, right? We like to say rev up. That's how we can think about our engine. Our thyroid is like the engine that we can rev up to help us with prevent that menopause weight gain or to lose that weight gain that we attributed to menopause that maybe wasn't menopause at all. It could be both. But if you're dealing with both, you're in menopause and hypothyroidism, that's a recipe for disaster and we can get in front of it. And I understand that there are some people and this, this episode's not about HRT specifically, so we're not going to get too far into that. And some people just are not comfortable with the HRT protocol. And I totally understand that, but perhaps it's not HRT. Perhaps it's not HRT that you need. Perhaps something with your thyroid can be beneficial. Also, I do want to say when it comes to HRT, that perhaps if you are in menopause and you are on HRT and you did initially, when you got on HRT, they did determine that you don't have hypothyroidism, but you are in menopause and now you're in HRT. It is very important that through the course of your HRT protocol that your thyroid is monitored because estrogen directly affects the function of the thyroid and HRT can impact the function of the thyroid because your estrogen levels are changing. So along with monitoring your hormone levels through your HRT protocol, your thyroid should also be monitored. So that's why it's so important to get your hormone replacement therapy from a reputable physicians, from reputable companies that are monitoring all the right things. And you'd think this should go without being said, but I have talked to people who for sure are, are using companies to get their HRT. And those companies do not have good practices around being proactive and getting in front of and monitoring the things that need to be monitored when you are doing something like HRT. So it is very important. Transcend is who I work with and they monitor those things for me. So I feel very comfortable with them. I'm very happy with my selection. I will link them. I'm not affiliated with them. I'm not sponsored to say this, but I've been very happy with the process so far with them. I will link their information down below, but I also wanted to discuss. So if you have a high T3 
TSH, or perhaps you want to just make sure that it is optimized, there are some ways to naturally lower your TSH. So let's go over some of the things that you can do to naturally lower it. So foods that contain iodine, because an iodine deficiency can cause hypothyroidism, by the way. So foods that create, contain iodine, iodized salt, dairy products, seafood, seafood, uh, and seaweed, fortified cereals. Some cereals are fortified with iodine. Those are good. Tyrosine, which is in seaweed, turkey, and eggs. Vitamin D, which is in eggs, fatty fish. Also antioxidants, berries, dark leafy greens. Selenium, which is in seafood, eggs, and seeds, and nuts. And you can also supplement with these things as well. You can supplement with selenium. Also omegas. And vitamin B12 are also good for the thyroid. So those are all ways and things that you can be consuming to naturally lower your TSH or to optimize it. Because like I said, you may not have hypothyroidism. You may be well within the normal range, but is it optimized though? And do you feel like your metabolism is sluggish? Do you feel that the calorie intake, that if your activity has stayed the same and your calorie intake has stayed the same, but suddenly you're gaining weight on the same activity and the same calories, maybe it's time to look at your thyroid. I'm not saying that everyone out there is walking around with hypothyroidism, but I am saying that a lot of people are not aware that they could be. And if that could, if w just one person listens to this podcast and gets their thyroid tested and figures out that was the problem all along, then this would be worth it. It would have helped me because I had no idea. I've never been someone who considered myself to have a slow metabolism. And it just never dawned on me that suddenly I would have an issue with my thyroid when I never have had it before. So for me, it likely was triggered with menopause. Like I said, I've seen up to statistics that are out there that say up to 35% of menopausal women experience some issues with their thyroid. Clearly, I'm in the percentage because I never had an issue. I have a history of very optimized thyroid, and then all of a sudden, menopause, and boom, 4.7, then 4.9. Who knows what it would have been at by now if I wouldn't have ended up with Transcend and realized that there was an issue. Who knows? Who, how much more weight would I have gained? Because I did gain a significant amount of weight in a pretty short period of time. Within a few months, I was up 15 pounds from where, like baseline for me. And I know a lot of people describe menopause like that. And I can say that I'm menopause itself doesn't directly cause weight gain. So when your weight gain is attributed to menopause, it is due to your behaviors as a result of the symptoms of menopause. So that's the difference with menopause, right? And then with menopause, the type of weight that you gain is concentrated to the abdomen because when you gain weight, when your progesterone is low, the fat tends to accumulate in the abdomen. And that's a whole kind of other topic, but really when you're not in your childbearing years, that's where the stomach, when you're not in your fertile years, that's where fat accumulates. When you're fertile, fat tends to accumulate you keep your girlish figure and your fat tends to accumulate in your, the lower under your, under in your thighs and butt area, whatever. But that's the type of weight you gain through from menopause, right? It's symptomatic. It's based on symptoms. You poor sleep, poor energy, lack of exercise, poor diet, lack of control around food because of all the other things, your cortisol is up, things like that. But hypothyroid is you are experiencing all those other things. So now you're less, you're symptomatic, right? You're low energy, all of those things. But in addition to that, your metabolism is turned down. And that is a recipe for some rapid weight gain. Menopause, indirect weight gain, hypothyroid, more direct and rapid weight gain because your metabolism is directly affected. Hopefully you guys understand what I mean by that. Uh, I'm, I'll leave you guys with this one other just explanation of what I mean by that. Our metabolism is the number of, it's the how much energy we use to function. So a healthy metabolism, say I, my body, if I did nothing else, if I laid in a box all day for 24 hours, my metabolism would use 1200 calories to keep myself alive, to run all of my bodily processes. If I had hypothyroidism, 
it wouldn't be using 1200 because it wouldn't be efficient, right? It would be using less. It would be using like 800 calories. So it would use less energy to function, which is a bad thing because that means that if it's only using 800 calories and I consumed 1200 now I've got 400 extra calories that my body was not efficient at using, so it's going to tuck it away as body fat. So here I am thinking, I'm doing nothing, so I'm going to eat 1,200 calories so that I at least don't gain any weight because I know my body's going to use at least 1,200 calories, or so I think. But unbeknownst to me, I have hypothyroidism, and my body's going to only use, let's say, 800 calories. So 400 calories into my love handles, 200 here, 200 here. So hopefully that makes sense. And you know me with my analogies, guys, I'm the queen of analogies. Hey, if this helped just one person, or if this is going to prompt just one person to go check your thyroid, then I've done something good here, even though I don't have my co-host and I'm really very sad. Let's all sit, be, have a moment of silence for the empty chair, but don't worry, he will be back. And I thank you guys so much for tuning in to this solo episode. And we will see you on the next one. Yeah.